Very well, very well. How are you doing? Yes, mate. All all good. Um, all good. Looking forward to this one, actually. I, I mean, mm. I look forward to all of them, but um, I think this one in particular, because we've, you know, it's, it's October now, beginning of October, so I think it'd be good to give people maybe some thoughts on what they can do if it hasn't quite gone to plan this year, some things to actually implement, maybe a tough conversation. And like it says in total, change starts with a brutal conversation with yourself. And hopefully, you know, if it hasn't quite gone to plan, people can have that conversation and go from there. Yeah, because there's, there's like a bit of a, a, a cycle, isn't there? Like a wave of, of fitness, hopes and motivation and dreams. And coming out, like going into summer, there's like a little bit of a push. Summer, we relax a little bit. Then going back into kind of school holidays, coming to Christmas. Again, September seems to be a bit of a busy time. And then, but now we're obviously in October and people's kind of motivation starts to drop down a little bit. So this is maybe a time, yeah, to have that harder conversation with ourselves and go, do you know what? am I not doing what I said I was going to do? Yeah, I agree. So we'll, um, like I say, we'll get into that. But just quickly before we do get into it, um, we do appreciate any likes, comments, shares. And also, you know, if you have any questions, we'll be happy to to talk about it on an upcoming podcast, um, upcoming live, because, you know, this is episode 32 now. So we've done a few of these. Um, yeah. Right, let's let's dive in. So do you agree, by the way? Because obviously I just come up with that title this morning because this is how we roll. Um, change, do, do you agree? It starts, you know, by actually having that brutal conversation with yourself where you look in the mirror or you assess your current situation and go, do you know what? What needs to change? Yeah, I, th I think it does. I think it, um, and I think mo most of the time when people finally do make the, the leap in and do actually make the change that sticks, uh, it's either them really facing the situation they're in or something bad happens and they have to. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's usually the two things. And I would say it's definitely better to, to sit down with yourself and look at yourself and go, honestly, what, what, what should I be doing? And, and what have I not been doing? That is definitely better than waiting for when someone says, well, you need to do it now. So you said to me, that's better than, having a mild heart attack or something major that happens which we see a lot right you know they you know we speak to guys who have like had a mild heart attack they've got got lucky you know because that is pretty fortunate to survive that or they've gone to the doctor and the doctors told them they've got these health problems what's what's quite mad actually is um i've spoken to people that have gone to the doctor and they you know you're at risk of this this and this and they actually say to me yeah but until i am that then i'm going to change it it's like the doctor's giving you these warnings. Yeah, and that's uh, usually when people say that. I think, well, I think something. I need to wait for something bad to happen. Yeah, you know, we almost say it with a smile on our face and like a and on a little bit of a little bit of a laugh about it. Um, but actually, kind of yes, I'm going to wait until I get heart disease, and then I'm going to sort my weight out. And I say that's 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 what that's what you're saying to yourself. And again, that's a, maybe that maybe that little bit of gallows humor around that is a bit of a defense mechanism, and and it was, uh, maybe not having that hard conversation that we should be doing and sitting down and rephrasing it and saying, do you know what? I'd, actually, I'd rather not wait until then. I would not. Yeah, a reason, yeah, 100%. The reason I give that example is I, I, I know someone, I'm not going to go into details, who borderline diabetes, and they had the conversation with the doctor and said, you know, you've been borderline for a long, long time. And they replied, well, until I've got it, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> and so I think if they were... If they were really honest with themselves, I would question whether they are okay with that. Yes, yeah. the 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 end result of diabetes could be, and you lose a limb or both both legs in a wheelchair, die 10, 15 years earlier than you would have done, and in not a particularly nice way. Um, so I think again, that person, if they actually if they actually were really on like really honest with themselves, I, I would seriously doubt they actually wanted that. Yeah, do you know what? Um, I think they were actually they had that conversation with themselves because it is hard to have that conversation. I know they've actually lost a stone in weight since then. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I think at the time it's like, I, do you know what? I think part of it is a little bit of like the male ego and, you know, we always kind of think we're a little bit indestructible until we aren't, right? So I think sometimes when you've got that and the doctor's going, lose weight, you need to do this, you need to do that, there's a little bit of like the male ego that goes, no, I'm all right. I'm all right, you know, enough. It's, it's not it's not that serious. But it's never, it's, never not, 
sorry, I'm just saying that, you know, it's never not that serious till it is serious, right? Yeah, and these things take such a long time, don't they? It's a, so that's, uh, I think we're very difficult at, at focusing on long goals and long-term changes. I think that's very hard for us to, yeah. to, to picture. And I guess the, the road to becoming um, type two, isn't it? Type two diabetic from health, from your lifestyle. Yeah. Is that takes a long time and start, so it might take 20, 30 years. So it's, it can be difficult to say, I'm going to make a change now because in 30 years time, I don't want to be this. That's a really, really, that doesn't, I mean, that's not the human way of working, is it generally? No. Um, we want things to be, to be, oh, I want to go to the gym and have a six pack straight away. Oh, I don't get that. Okay. And then I'll probably go to the gym next week then. Yeah. All right. Look, um, if you're going to have that brutal conversation with yourself, because I, I, I do genuinely believe that I think you do have to sit down, assess your, you know, your lifestyle, like if, how, if you're a parent, you know, are you, are you happy with how you're influencing your kids, your work situation, you know, your health, your fitness, if you're going to have that brutal conversation with yourself, like how, how would you have it? Cause I think it'd be really helpful to give some, the guys listening, like some pointers of like actually how to do that. Um, I, I suppose it's it, it's giving yourself space and time to, on your own. I don't think this is, I think this is a really hard, I don't know, you could, I mean, you could ask somebody, you could ask someone close to you, your partner and say. Yeah, but they'll lie to you. Possibly, possibly. They'll so, lie to you. They'll go, no, you're, you're all right as you are, which is a lie, by the way. I, I think it's probably listening to the little, the little voice in your head. So so if, if you're asking a question, okay, about your health, about, weight or your body or whatever it is and there's there's a little voice in your head even if it's quiet and somewhere mm -hmm. near the back even if it says that little voice is saying you have to sort this out then it's a matter of being listening to that and going actually that is a that's a important part of your brain going that's that's the little the start of the brutal conversation and it might be a really really hard conversation to have and there might be things that it's that this little voice says you, these things you have to change and it's and I don't know, write them down, look at them, get them in on paper, make them physical, and go. Okay, this is these are the things I need to change. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's the start, isn't it? And recognizing them, and the phrase owning that, I guess. Mm -hmm. If if you know you have to cut down your drinking, if you know you've got to change the way you eat, if you know you've got to start moving your body more only in that situation going to i'm i've done this to myself uh and but also i'm in control of fixing it yeah no i agree i i think um jordan peterson talks about it a lot like sit at the end of your bed and take some time to think about what's going on and then you know what you want to change i think it's really powerful to stand in front of the mirror like mm -hmm. really powerful to stand in front of the mirror and if you're feeling even braver probably in your pants, probably in your pants and literally look at yourself and say, am I happy with this? But not just like the physical, because that's just one side of things, but the physical will affect areas of your life, confidence, willing to take on challenges, like energy levels, all those things. So I'd, I'd literally look in the mirror and have that brutal conversation with myself and write down how you feel. We don't really do that as men, do we? We you know we swallow it. We don't really talk about how we feel. So that's that's what I would do. And by the way, that'd be really, really difficult. But I don't know if you've done it. I've done it, Tom. There's that book called um, Mirror Work. You know, uh, Mirror yeah. Work. And I didn't really like the book, but it definitely got me to like look in the mirror and ask myself some questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do remember doing that now. Um, and yeah, and I had some interesting conversations with myself. Yeah. Um, and it, it's, a, it's a weird thing because part of the book is you you look into your eyes your, your own eyes and you talk to yourself yeah um, and it's a, it's a it's an interesting experience and again i think you write about men um like even the phrase uh, was it the strong silent type there's yeah. actually a lot more strength it's a lot harder to vocalize how you feel than it is to to hold it in and I, i'm not it's probably some 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 repressed man made up that phrase, the strong silent type to, to maybe justify the fact that he found it really hard to say I'm struggling or um, I love my children or whatever it is. So I, th I think again, I don't know, get rid of the idea that, that, that strength, hold, head strength holds everything, bottles everything up, 
real strength is when you actually express and talk. Um, and I I still find it hard for certain things. So I'm saying I, I don't have it all worked out. Um, no, of course we don't. Look, we are we are part of the we're part of it, aren't we? We're part of like I won't, won't say problem because um, yeah. I don't think that's the what we're part of it, right? Um, but I think you know what, like imagine you are a, a wife listening to this, and your your husband has had that brutal conversation. He has decided to make some changes. That is really attractive for a woman. Isn't it? Do you know what? To go, do you know what? He's realized that he needs to make some changes. He wants to move forward. He wants to start taking better care of his health. He wants to be a better role model, better husband. That's really attractive. And you and if you open that dialogue with your wife, and I know we're going on a bit of a segue on this, but I think that's that's really powerful. And when because you when you are on a path to better yourself, that can't help be be appealing to, to your other half, right? Yeah. And the, that the you the support you'll get because of that honesty will be will be will be more um because there'll be an understanding as to why yeah um, and, uh, yeah if I, I think you're exactly right i think if you uh if honesty is is attractive honesty is attractive and also like having some drive and purpose you know not just waking up every morning just like being knackered and by the way like we know life can be like really hard especially right now like everything seems to be going up you know, some people are just getting through from day day to day, but I think that's tough. But you know, if if you do want that little bit more, if you do want that more energy, you want to have closer relationships, having a bit of a purpose and being inspired and driving forwards, like that that can't be anything but good for a family, right? No, um, you you're going to be more like, inspiring is a good word. You're going to be more inspiring for your family. You're going to be inspiring the people around you. There's there's countless people out there who have who have made the change and made it, and and people are inspired by that. And you could be a a force force for good. That sounds like some sort of superhero thing, but it's right. You could be a, a force to help to to show people. The thing is, though, Tom, you, as a dad, you are a superhero in your family, especially to your kids. Maybe not always to your wife, but you are that. You, you know, you you'll be the superhero to your kids. You know, and if you're not. I don't want to be too strong on this, but at the end of the day, if you're not looking after your health, you're not prioritizing your health, you are letting them down a little bit. Yeah. You know, you, you, you go out a man, ha like it's a man thing and it's to go out and provide. It's part of like our psychology. Right. And you feel like you have to do that. You have to provide. Whereas imagine if you feel, thought, thought about your health in that same way, do you know what? I have to look after my health because I, I need to provide. And the way you're going to provide best is by looking after your health. Right. Yeah, no, I think I think you're right, and maybe that that goes back into having that really hard conversation. Is the way that I'm looking after my body affecting others? Is it affecting my children? Because yeah, I think I think you, your our sons look up to the fathers as as the the person who they maybe want to be or definitely don't want to be. There's there's two different ways, um, and I think the daughters maybe look at fathers and go, that is kind of if you're a good example, that's the man I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, that's effectively the kind of man I'm going to look for. And it's no surprise that people tend to go for partners yeah. who are like their, either definitely not like their parents or something <laughs> like their parents. Um, so there's a, yeah, I think there's a, there is an example to, to show. And I, I, I would say for me, it's one of the, the big motivators is, is that um, I, I want to still be, know fit and healthy and i kind of want to be the the person that my son brags about at school that can still run fast or do a cartwheel or do something i, I want to be that person for as long as possible yeah nice um I'm, I'm not a parent but you know i've been around lots of parents and i think that's of course that's that's massively important and kids absorb and copy what their parents do yeah. So it's it's so important that, you know, if you're not where you want to be in your health and fitness, if you know you're not showing up as well as you can do, if you know you're not looking, all these areas that you're struggling in, yeah, it's, it starts with a brutal conversation. Go, do you know what? What needs to change here? And by the way, we're not saying that conversation's easy. It's very, it's very hard. But then anything worth doing is hard, isn't it? If you've got to move forwards, every, everything's pretty hard, right? Yeah. And I think it, it like if, from, from my experience, it's a conversation I have to have all the time. And, and I'm slowly learning about myself as I go along. Yeah. Slowly learning about the things that I that I that I am good at and the things that I'm not going to say can't do. 
things that I'm really bad at and the things that I know that now that I've tried to do in the past, which are so far away from, from my be for me, for me to do that is, is, is so difficult. So either I have to change or I have to get help to do it. And I say, I'm, t- I'm talking more kind of from my work, my business. Yeah. The things that I just, if it's just, I find it so, so cognitively difficult to do. I go, I'm, I can, I'm, I'm going to get someone else to help me with that. And I guess maybe that's part of he- health. If health, if you're bossing it a business, whatever else, but health is a thing you need, you struggle with, then find that person out there that can help you. Whether it's someone like me and Michael, or whether it's a friend, or whether it's a, whether it's your partner or whether it's your kids. I saw a friend of mine in the gym with his son and he said, Oh, I've got, nice. my, I've got my PT here. And I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Said, his son. Fantastic. You know what, then do you know what, if, if, if that, if that's what, if that's the person you need to keep me going, then that, that's brilliant. How awesome is that? Well, Empowering. Think, sorry. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Sorry to interject there. I think, you know, you make a really good point. Cause I think we'll have people listening and connected with us, especially on LinkedIn who are business owners, executives, who I guarantee have spent loads of money with a business coach or they've done a marketing campaign or they've done sales and all these things. But at the end of the day, if you look after your health, if you get fitter, you get more energy, you're going to boost profits. You're going to take on more challenges. Your business is going to grow because you're in a much better place and you've got more energy. You know, yeah. You know, what, what would an extra 10% energy do to the average business owner? (laughs) You know, you're going to get, because people always want more time. And I think that's just, it's not, it's not going to happen. You're not going to get more time, but you can, you can make more use of your time because you've got more energy. Yeah. Yeah. So if you could either, you could either be 10% more efficient during your day, or you could take 10% more time off with your family it, and, and still keep the same productivity. Uh, and I think if you, like I say, if, if you're not looking after yourself health wise, I think a 10% increase in energy and, and productivity is probably, is probably low balling it. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, I reckon, Within two weeks, you'll probably be twenty five percent at least more energetic, especially yep. if you sort up your hydration out and your sleep. Probably even fifty percent, be it to be completely honest. All right, so look, we wanted to talk about how it is slowly coming into winter. It's actually been quite nice down south, and it hasn't it hasn't like been that bad. But we all know in a few weeks' time, it's going to be dark. Clock's going to change. So you're going to wake up. It's dark. You're going to go to bed. It's dark. Motivation inevitably dips it does we can't deny that um what can we do so that doesn't happen tom what can we help the people with what can we do um i suppose it's having to think about uh how you want to be coming into christmas is one good thing Um, yes and because christmas is a time of indulgence and it probably i think it maybe should be time to enjoy yourself um but i would say you don't want to be coming into january feeling feeling sluggish um, and not in a great way. So maybe, so if your motivation is going, try and extend it a little bit and try and recognize that motivation is probably going to go up and down, but actually think, visualize yourself on January, the, let's, say, let's say January the 1st, maybe January the 2nd. How do you, how do you want to arrive there? Well, January like? the 1st, you'll still be eating all the biscuits, right? You're in the chocolates and the, and the yes. cheese, right? <laughs> Got leftovers finish off. That's, I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and think, yeah, I've, think about how do you want to wake up then? um and 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 putting a plan in place to 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 get to that point and be where you want to be um and like we've always say it's it's not about totally changing your lifestyle it's it's about setting some easy achievable kind of reaching slightly reaching targets that you can definitely achieve during the week i'd also you know say you know when we're talking about having that brutal conversation with yourself like how many Christmases do you want to go into feeling like crap? Mm. Like, do you want this to be another one? You know, because we all have lots of social things on, you know, eating, drinking. For most people, Christmas starts December 1st. Be it, let's be honest, most people it starts December 1st, you know, calendars, chocolates, mulled wine, like all these things. Do you really want to go into another Christmas feeling like absolute crap? And then just to wake up on January 1st or January 2nd and that New Year's resolution that you said to yourself that you'd sort out every year for the last 20 years. Do you really want to be keep saying that that story to yourself? You know, again, brutal conversation. And you could start now. What is it? 12 weeks roughly to Christmas? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, if you started now and put in some changes and, you know, even if you only dropped a pound a week between now and Christmas, it's almost a stone. You're going to go in feeling a lot better, right? Yeah. Definitely. And it, I mean, we, we've, 
we've seen massive changes with our clients in 12 weeks. I mean, the huge yeah. changes. Life changing. Uh, life changing. And again, not through any doing anything crazy. It's just setting some habits, getting some accountability some, so you actually do them, tracking it so you see the results. So you see, feel, again, you feel buoyed up and motivated that actually yeah. you are, even though if you feel like you're not achieving, you are. And then in, yeah, in 12 weeks' time, you could make a massive change. And like, again, if you go back to like the idea of like waking up in January, feeling the way you felt over the last many years, I see people walk into the gym again with that look on their face of like, fuck, I'm here. I'm here again. I'm here again in the same place. I don't like this place. And they sign up and a few weeks later, they've gone. Yeah, we all know. We all know the January rush. And I think one thing that's really important to like recognize is, you know, winter months are coming and yeah, motivation will go down. It's going to, whether that's going to the gym, but we all know it's not about the gym. We all know it's about the diet side of things, sleep, reducing stress, you know, even prioritizing your health, like all these things. So if your motivation is going down, which it's going to, it doesn't take motivation to have a healthy dinner, does it? No, no. You know, so... Put things in place that don't require motivation. Maybe having a little bit more, or well not maybe more discipline. Yeah, and I say, I say, getting rid of motivation is that, or, or forgetting about motivation is a whole different. That's a whole kind of. I think we talked about this on one of our other other ones, didn't we? Yeah, motivation will, is like this: day to day, yeah. hour to hour, minute to minute. And 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 if you're saying to yourself, "Well, I just need the motivation," and that's what you're relying on, suddenly arriving. You're never going to get there, but you're exactly right with them. Um, yeah, because it's when when has that worked in the past? It just doesn't. It just doesn't. It's 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 like it's is it extrinsic? It's from an external source. We're gonna something's gonna happen outside of our life that's gonna motivate us to do it. I don't know. Uh, it's sunny and I feel motivated to go for my run. Oh, it's it's just next the next day. It's a bit a bit drizzly. I'm not motivated to go for my run. Also, do you know what that does to yourself? Which is really important. You keep letting yourself down. You keep letting yourself down, you know, when what, one minute you're motivated, you go to the gym, you feel good. The next day you're not because it's raining or you're a little bit late from work. And what you're doing is you're giving, you keep promising yourself you're going to do it, you're going to fix all these things and you keep letting yourself down. And that chips away at your self-esteem. And also if we talk about like partnerships and relationships and marriages and stuff, no one wants to be with someone that keeps on promising all these things and then letting themselves down because you're letting other people down. And then you become like, you know, you get that, oh, this, they've tried another thing. They've tried another thing. And that support becomes less and less and less and less, right? Because it's just another thing that someone's tried that that hasn't worked. Yeah. So maybe that's the other brutal conversation you have to have with yourself is, is I don't need motivation. Yeah. And, and I need to forget about that. What about, yeah, do you know what? Imagine having that conversation. If, if you just said to yourself, let's imagine the word motivation didn't exist. Mm. Then what? Yeah, what else have you got? Yeah, what else have you got? If I can't use the word motivation or it doesn't exist, like what's what's the next thing? What's my next excuse? All right, um, we're being quite brutal today, but I think yeah. sometimes people need it. Yeah. All right, so if you haven't got anywhere so far, you know, we're we're October now. What would you suggest doing, Tom? What 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 would help people move forwards? What practical actions practical actions to implement from today i think it's 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 the stuff that that little voice in the back of your head already knows and i think if 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 you're sat here watching this now and if you say what healthy what what do i need to change in my life in my diet let's say what could what do i need to change and your brain goes ping it'll give you it'll give you loads of answers and i suppose it's the matter of um, picking up the easiest ones. So the, the easiest ones uh, are things like hydration, mm -hmm. something that we know that we're told um, and the vast majority of people don't do. It's it's like it's so vitally important and such a good tool. If you're again, if you think about weight loss, it's such a good tool from the start. It's going like I'm going to I'm going to hydrate myself so my body's not getting confused between hunger and thirst. I'm going to, I'm going to eat less. I'm going to, my body's going to work better. So again, I, I think that's usually one of the first things to go. It's like, how much are you drinking? Oh, I'll have three coffees in the morning. And then I usually have a glass of wine after work. And you think, okay, um, your body is seriously dehydrated. 
let's start with that. So I would say that's probably the let's 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 pick that as number one. Hydration's huge. Um I'm gonna come I'm gonna come at one from just a slightly different angle here, which we maybe haven't talked about, but I would you know we're talking about this like having these brutal conversations and people lie to themselves that I don't have time. Go and check your screen time. Get your phone out. There's a little thing. Tells you how much screen time that you um you're having. Go and check that. And then tell, come back and tell us that you don't have time. Because I reckon the average people are on screens at least three to four hours a day. At least. And by the way, look, if you if you do some work on your phone, totally cool. But let's be honest, once you've done the work, you're flicking through Instagram, you're flicking, flicking through LinkedIn, you're flicking through Facebook, YouTube, you know, whatever, you know, whatever it is. It even tells you, time. It'll tell you what apps you've used, actually. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. And then I guess there's another bit of conversation. Time, time is not the issue. No. So again, if you've ever saying, oh, I just don't have the time to do it. Again, it's having that kind of honest conversation with yourself, looking in the mirror and going, okay, I've spent an hour on Facebook today. Minimum, probably. Hmm. All right. Um, I think just one more because I, I like we like doing friends and threes. And also, that's all you need to do, right? It's normally only like three things a week, probably. Yeah. Um, check out how sedentary are you? Um, and I know I know the 10,000 steps is not based on any science, but it's a good indicator. If you're nowhere near 10,000 steps, then you are too sedentary. Well, I want, it'd be interesting to know like what the actual average is. I think you can find it on my, on my Sam, Sam, Samsung Health, it tells me, but that's only people that obviously are tracking. And if you're tracking, the chances are you're going to be moving your body more than, than the average person, right? Um, and by the way, that's a, that has a sedentary, like sitting here like this, has a massive marker and impact on early, I think, signs of like early death. Yep. Like it goes up in like percentages, you know, if it's like eight hours, it's this, if it's 10, if it's 12. And the majority of people do come in, they sit at an office, they drive into work, they've got their, you know, parking space, they've got their drive, they come in, they sit down, they watch TV for another five, six hours in the evening, you know out of a 24 hour day, people might actually be sitting down for, do you know what I would even like to say, maybe like 18 hours yeah. and then sleeping in bed. Yeah, so I think that maybe that's the next one to look at. And again, not overcomplicating it, not worrying about whether it's per, whether it's based on science or whatever, or, or the perfect thing, just going, okay, if let's just use it as an indicator and maybe trust me and Michael that actually it, it is a good indicator. And and it's, it's, it's all we're trying to do is is we're not trying to reinvent the wheel we're just trying to put those habits in there that we know work and actually again if you listen to that little voice in your head your little voice in your head knows you're too sedentary yeah 100 percent. and everyone wants more energy but like everyone even if you're like energetic everyone would want more of it it's a bit like it's a bit like a bodybuilder in some ways you know a bodybuilder will always want more muscle someone that wins will always want more titles you know, as people, we always want more energy. You know, we like doing stuff. We want more energy. And the only way to get more energy is to move your body. It's literally the only way. You're not going to get it from having more sleep. You're not going to get it from sitting down more. We actually get more tired. Because this is one of those things that kind of, like, you can tell, like, infuriates me a little bit. It's like, you want more energy, but you're sitting down all the time. Move. Move your flipping body. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah maybe it's another brutal conversation to have with yourself. Yeah, even if it's like getting up from your desk for 10 minutes every hour, go go to the water fountain, go and I don't know, go and chat to you to your mate in the in the other in the other room, you know, just if you're working from home, get up, make a cup of tea, do some squats, do something. Um, all right, I reckon we'll wrap up there. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So look, um, hopefully you got a lot of value. We absolutely agree, and I'm pretty sure every coach or fitness person or anyone in any kind of like coaching or role like that would agree that it ha change starts with a brutal conversation with yourself so if you haven't had that conversation basically go and have it and see what comes up what emotions and hopefully that help you to move forwards um as always we appreciate any likes any comments and any questions because um obviously we love doing this and we'll be happy to um answer anything that anyone um is unsure about is that right tom absolutely yeah and we love talking about this shit we do we took we could literally talk about this all day but we do <laughs> have to go all right guys um 
we should be on next week. Please tune in. But yeah, once again, any shares and likes and comments are very much appreciated. Sure. Cheers, Tom. Thanks, Michael. Cheers, guys.